In the next 5 minutes I want to build with you the geometry for this, which was the very first thing I built back when I started 3D in Cinema 4D. Shout out to Grayscale Gorilla. So let's dive into Houdini, and as we want to build geometry, we are working in the OBJ context. And what we want to do is drop down a geometry node here by pressing tab, which brings up this menu. And yes, you could go through everything here and just select the geometry, but Houdini's search function here is very powerful. So I'm just going to start typing geo and hit enter. Then I've got this hovering node here, hit enter again to drop it down. So that's my geo node in here. And inside this node lives a tiny program that generates some geometry, which is then displayed in the scene here. And currently this node is empty, so there is no tiny programs executed in here and no geometry is created. So let's dive into this geo node by hitting enter or I. And again, you can see this is empty. And for example, I could press tab again and start typing sphere, hit enter twice and drop down a sphere. And now inside this geometry node, I've got a program executing here that generates this sphere, which now is a primitive type. So it's a perfectly round sphere. And we can change its type up here in the parameters. This is where I can select and change the parameters for the selected node here. So I might want to set that to a polygon and increase its frequency to increase the subdivision, like so. Let's say I randomly want to place other spheres onto this sphere. The way you typically do that in Houdini is using copy to points, this one here, and let's just create another sphere, highlight this. So this is the visibility flag. And within your geometry container, there can only be one node that is visible. And this is actually the node that will be output to Houdini as a result of this whole program that we're building in the geo node. So let's scale this sphere down here a bit and set it to be a polygon as well. And now we can set up our copy to points. So this takes in two inputs, the target points to copy to and the geometry, which we're going to copy. So we want to copy this small sphere onto the points of this bigger sphere here. So let's highlight the copy to points. And you can see we very regularly copied this sphere onto those spheres individual points here. And if we dial back the frequency of the big sphere here, we can influence how many individual copies of that small sphere are instant onto that. However, that's a bit too regular. So let's just highlight this sphere and again, increase the frequency and drop down a scatter node here. And by the way, those tiny nodes we're stringing together here are called SOPs for surface operators. And those lines that form between those nodes are data flow. So in this case, it's geometry data flowing through our tiny program that we're building. So what the scatter sub does is it scatters points onto a surface. In this case, a thousand points, which when we highlight the copy to points is a lot. So let's dial back the actual point count like so, and maybe increase the frequency and thus the subdivision of our spheres that we're instancing on here. All right, neat you might say, but I want to have points inside that sphere as well and not on the surface. And for that, the usual workflow in Houdini is to convert that sphere here, which just is a surface, into a volume. And a really quick but also a legacy way of doing that is using a node called ISO offset, which I typically only use in this workflow. So what this does is it turns that sphere into a volume. And by increasing the sampling division here, I can increase the volume's resolution to say 60 or 64, and then pipe this into the scatter node. And now we're scattering the points throughout this volume here. So when I highlight the copy to points here, you can see I've got points distributed also within that spherical volume. The last thing I want to do for now is change those individual spheres sizes. And I'm going to do that by using an attrib randomize, which I'll wire in after the scatter node here. And by default, it's set up to randomize an attribute called CD. That's the color diffuse. And you can see the results of this, those differently colored spheres here. However, I want to change this, not to randomize CD, but some attribute called P scale. And we end up with this. Let's dial down the dimensions because this is only a float value. And let's increase the minimum value to say 0.3 and the maximum value to 1.5. So we end up like this. Finally, just for good practice, I'll append a null to that here. And if I hit shift enter, I can directly attach this null to the last selected and highlighted node. And I'm just going to call this node out here. So that's the output. So that's our very first very tiny network we built in Houdini. If you like what we're doing and want to support us or want to gain access to more in-depth courses, we're super happy if you decide to support us on Patreon. And we want to thank all of our patrons, especially Joseph Howerton, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, Encore BFX, NetherRealm Studios, and Francois Bayajon. Thanks so much, guys.